What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodeV.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to process web forms with Flask and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at web forms with Flask, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which is super helpful, and check out CodeV.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. It's coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so we've got our basic Flask app continuing on where we left off, and let's head back over to the terminal real quick. and. I've restarted this, so I'm going to copy and paste these two export commands real quick that we looked at a couple of videos ago, just to make sure this is all running. And then we can go flask run, to run our server. Lazy loading is engaged, and we can check it out. And all we have is our home and our about page, not much going on. So in this video, I want to talk about web forms. Now, every single website on the internet uses forms for something. There's a contact page, an email page, maybe a sign up for my email newsletter form, maybe there's a login form, you know, forms are just everywhere. And with Flask, they're pretty easy. And so that's what we're going to look at in this video. So I think we're going to pretend that we have an email newsletter, and we want somebody to sign up for that. So we'll have a little form for that. Uh, we'll take their information, I'll show you how to process it with Flask, and then how to do different things with it. So first things first, let's head over here to our app.py file. And I'm just going to grab this index route. And let's create a new page for this. And let's call it subscribe. And we want to define the in or the uh, function as subscribe. And the title we can say subscribe to my email newsletter. Our email newsletter is even still a thing. I don't know. So we want to render subscribe HTML, and we can pass in this title. So let's go ahead and save this. Now come over to our templates, right click and create a new file. And let's go file save as and let's call this subscribe.html. And now we can just go to our index page, I'm just going to copy all this code, control C, or right click copy, and then let's just paste it in here. And instead of this title, we can pass that title variable. So let's just do that. That we defined in our view. And instead of hello world, let's say subscribe to my newsletter. Da, da, da. All right, so let's save this. Oh, and also we need to probably add a link to this to our base.html file. So let's come down here to our nav bar code, grab this li here. And instead of pointing to about page, we want to point to subscribe. And we want the text to say subscribe. All right, so let's save this, head back over to our app, hit reload, and now we have this subscribe link. All right, so this is bugging me. This text is too close to this nav bar. Let's fix that real quick. So let's see, uh, right here, let's just put a line break in the base.html file right above our block content. Save this, hit reload. Okay, that's a little better. Okay, so now we've got the basic page. Now we want to add a form. So there's lots of ways you can add forms. You can just hard code them, but we're already using bootstrap. So I'm going to use the bootstrap form. So we can click on documentation at getbootstrap.com and come down here to components and then forms. And here's a basic bootstrap form. Pretty simple. I'm just going to grab this guy right here, bring it back to our subscribe.html page. And let's see. Let's put some line breaks. And let's just paste this in. So let's go ahead and save this and just take a look and see what we have here. Okay, so we've got an email address and a password. And this is really big, we could change the formatting of this if we want, but we won't worry about that right now. So we don't want a password field, we do want an email address field, we don't need this check me out thing. So let's get rid of those. And also this blue, I don't like that blue color, I like uh, gray, so we'll change that too. Let's change that first. So instead of here's the button, the submit button. So instead of BTM primary, we want secondary. And this is just a bootstrap color you can read about in the documentation. Okay, so now it's gray. I kind of like that better. Next, let's get rid of that check me out thing. So there's a checkout box, check me out, label, label. Okay, here's the div. When we click on it, the closing div highlights. So we know that's the one so we can get rid of all of that. So let's save this. Okay, that looks better. 
And we don't want that password one either. So let's see, look around for password. There's password. Okay, so we can get rid of that. And maybe we want to get rid of this small thing too. I don't really care about that. All right, so let's save this. Come back over here. Okay, so now we just have the email address and the button. So let's copy this entire thing and create two more. So one, two, and instead of, and we don't want a label, whoops, we don't want a label at all, so we'll get rid of that. In fact, we're gonna get rid of all the labels. You can keep them or get rid of them, it doesn't really matter. Instead, we're gonna do something a little different. So the type is email, let's change this to text. We just want this to be a text thing. All right, and let's see. Let's go placeholder equals, and let's call this one first name, and let's give this a name of first underscore name. And I'm just gonna copy all of this, and come down here to the next one, and let's call this one last name, and give it a name of last underscore name. And then down here with the email, I'm gonna do the same thing, placeholder. Let's type in email address, and let's call this email. All right, so let's save this and see what we have. Okay, so we've got a first name, a last name, and an email and the placeholder text is showing up. That's kind of cool. Once you start to type, it disappears, so I like that. Now the submit button, let's give this some space. Let's pull this back up, and let's just give it a line break here. Save this. Just cosmetically, I like it down there a little bit better. Okay, so we're almost done. We've got our basic form, but now up here at the top, let's see, div class form group. Okay, we've got this form tag, but it's not complete, so we need an action, and we need a method. So the method we want is post, right? Anytime you're posting a form, you're gonna use post. You can use post or get, post is the one that you're always gonna use. And the action, where do we wanna send this? Well, let's send this to another page. Let's call it, what? Call it sign up, or let's call it Let's just call it form. Yeah, let's just call it form. We're processing the form. Call it anything you want. So if we save this and come back here and reload and then you know type some stuff, you notice this is an email field, so it has to be in an email format, or else we get our angry red thing. Now if we click submit, it says not found because we don't have a form page. Now you could send this back to its own page, send it back to itself. And we might look at that later, but in this video, I just wanna send it to a new page, this form page. So that means we need to come to our app.py and we need to actually create a route and stuff for that. So let's do that real quick. So we called it form. We want to pass this to form. I don't know, thank you, All right? And we want this to be form.html. So then we need to come up to our templates Create a new file, go file, save as, we wanna call this form.py. And we can come to our subscribe, or we can go to our index page, it's a nice one. We can just copy all of this, paste it in here. Oop, we call this form.py. We wanna call this form.html. There we go. <laughs> I'm gonna close this and open it again, okay, that looks better. So here, we just wanna pass in our title, right? And then, thank you for subscribing. All right, so for now, let's just make sure this works. So we can submit the form, and method not allowed. That's because when we created this route, come down here, we just created a basic route, but this one's a little bit different, right? This is actually, uh, we're, we're posting to this page. This is not a get request, this is a post request. So we need to tell it that. So we can go methods 
equals and then post. Now if we save this, boom, thank you for subscribing. So, okay, we've sort of processed the form. It works, right? We can fill it out and click the button. And when we do, it, you know, goes to this other page. Uh, but what happened to all of this stuff? Where did it go? And how do we grab it and do stuff with it? Well, one thing very quickly I want to look at first, if we just come to this page now, just come to form, we get an error because this isn't an actual web page unless somebody fills out the form. We don't want people to be able to come to this page on its own, right? Unless they fill out the form. So that's why we get this method not allowed because this is a get request. When you just call a website, when you call a web page, that's a get request. We're not using a get request on this. We're using a post request as we designated right here. So kind of interesting thing. All right, so now we are posting to this page, but the information we're posting is sort of disappearing. It's it's just going away. We want to be able to grab it and do stuff with it. So we can do that inside this function in our form function. And all we do is we want to create some variables. And I'm going to call them first name, set that equal to something we're gonna call this one last name, set that equal to something, and then email and set that equal to something. And the reason why we have three variables is because on our subscribe.html page, we have three input boxes, right? We have a first name one, a last name one and an email one. So it makes sense that we now want variables that have those same names, right? You can name these anything you want, but it makes sense to keep them the same names you used as your form input box fields, right? So now in order to actually get the stuff that is submitted in the form, we just come to each of these variables and we call our request dot form dot get and then pass in the name of the thing. So ours is first name. And now that's not this name, right? We're not passing the variable, we're passing in whatever we call the name of the input box. So if we called this Bob, we would put Bob right here, right? We happen to call this one first name. So uh, it goes as first name. So I'm just going to copy and paste each of these. And instead of first name here, I'm going to change this one to last name. And here, I'm going to change this to email. So now we have this stuff, as soon as the form gets submitted, it slaps in whatever's in each of those boxes into each of these variables. And now we can do anything we want with them, right? So, you know, if this was me building an actual website, I would probably have a database that I would save this to, right? But we're not into databases yet. So we're not going to do that. Instead, I'm just going to show you that this worked by passing each of these things back into the page, and then uh, showing it on the screen. And also we'll do something else with it too. That's kind of fun after that. So right up here, we can just like we have before just pass first name equals first name, we can pass last underscore name equals last underscore name. And we can pass email equals email. And if we save this now we can access these, each of these things on our form.html page. So we can come up here and type, uh, I don't know, please confirm your information. And then give it a couple of line breaks. And then, then we can just go first underscore name. And we can go last underscore name, we're just passing in these variables. And then maybe we want a couple of pipes or something make it interesting. And then email. Alright, so let's save this and let's give this a shot. So let's head back to our subscribe page. And let's go john elder john at codemy.com and submit. Oh, we have all kinds of errors. So what we forgot to do is add a request to our app. So we can come back over to app.py and here at the very top of the screen, we've imported flask, we've imported render templates, we also want to import a request. So go ahead and save this. And then come back here and submit and now it works. So it's that request module or whatever that allows us to pass stuff around. And you can see john elder and it says none there. 
And that's because, what did we do wrong? Email equals, oh, email name. <laughs> All right, save this. Let's give this another try. It's Tuesday. I'm having a hard day. Feels like a Monday. All right, so now it says John Elder, john at codemy.com. Please confirm your information. Now, uh, that's cool. That means that it worked. We were able to pass stuff around. We're, like, we're able to, uh, you know, put them in variables and do stuff with them. And like I said, you know, you're probably going to want to add this to a database if you have a subscriber database. We're not into databases yet. We'll talk about those, you know, in a couple of videos from now. But this is just the mechanism to pass stuff around via forms. So it's pretty simple. Now, let's play around with this a little bit more because this is a little bit boring. Let's come up here to the top of our app and let's create a list called subscribers. This is just for fun here. And it's a Python list, but it's empty right now, but we need to define it up here. So now we can come down here and whenever somebody fills out this form, we can go subscribers.append, right? We wanna append them in just our subscriber list. And we could just pass this as a, 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 an F string, probably the easiest thing to do. And now we can pass in each of those things. So we can go first, first name, last name and email, right? So every time somebody fills out the form, it appends their first name, last name and email to that list up there, right? It becomes a new list item. Now, instead of passing in all each of these specific things, Let's go ahead and just pass in our subscribers. So subscribers equals subscribers. Now if we save this and head back over to our form, now instead of doing this, let's just call that subscriber. Now this is a list, so we're going to have to loop through it, but just for now, let's just look at it. So, okay, now if we come back, and fill out this form again, we get nothing. Oh, subscribers, there we go. All right, so let's come back, try it again. Boom, subscribers, right? Check this out though, if we come back here and reload this page and add uh, Tim Smith and Tim at smith.com and submit this again, boom, John Elder's still there and Tim Smith is there. And that's kind of cool. Now. This is just a list. It will die whenever your web server stops running. This is not like a database that will be remembered forever, but it's still kind of fun, right? Now let's come back through here and let's loop through here instead. So let's go, uh, instead of just doing subscribers, let's go do some Jinja and let's go for subscriber in subscribers. Let's just print out subscriber. And maybe let's put all this in an unordered list, just for fun. And we always have to end our for loop, right. And for each of these, we want to make this a list item. There we go. All right, so let's save this and come back here and hit reload. And when we do, well, we hit reload, so it got weird. But if we come back here and let's go uh, Mary Smitherson, <laughs> I don't know, Mary at Mary.com. Boom, boom, boom. Very cool. So now, like I said, if we come back here to our app and close our server and then run it again. Now, if we come back here and try this again with Mary Smitherson, she's the only one, right? Because whenever the server stops running, that information gets lost to memory. So it's not a, a practical thing to do. It's just kind of fun to look at. And let's go, uh, let's try this again. John Elder, John at codemy.com. Boom, Mary Smitherson, John Elder. So it's just kind of fun, right? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, the important thing in this video is the forms 
And uh, recapping very quickly, we just, well, first of all, we add the request up here. Then we create a new route to forms. It has to have a methods of post because we're posting the data from our forms. When we do that, whatever we called our index boxes, we create variables out of them. We pass whatever they typed into the box by typing this request.form.get with the name of the thing on the form. And then once you have that, you can do anything you want to. You can add it to a list. You can add it to a database, which we'll talk about later. You can pass, you know, the individual variables onto the screen on the, the next page. You know, if you want to say thanks, Bob, for subscribing, you could do that by passing the Bob first name, you know, first name variable through here. Whatever you want to do, you can do. And uh, pretty simple and pretty straightforward. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps the channel out. And check out Konami.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 85,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Konami.com, and we'll see you in the next video.